In this video, I'm gonna take you through an animal-based day of eating and share practical ways that you can modify your diet to lose fat and improve gut health. If you're new here, my name is Marcus and I've successfully lost 60 pounds and I've been helping busy folks lose fat and get healthy for the last 12 years now. Let's get into the video. I got in for my run about two hours ago and I am finally hungry. I find after runs, specifically endurance exercise, I am just not hungry for a while. And the further that I run, the longer it takes for me to work up an appetite. So it's about 10.45 now and I'm gonna put together some brunch, let's say. Now, this is a bit of a strange meal, but do not knock it until you try it. The first time I tried it, I was surprised. Sounded super weird. It's delicious. So weird. I know. It is so tasty though. You have to try it. Just in case you were wondering, this beef is 75-25 which is quite fatty. So if your goal is fat loss, you probably wanna to lean towards something that's a little bit leaner, maybe 80-20, 85-15. If you're really trying to lean out, 90-10 or 93-7, I think they even have now. The fattier the beef is, the better it's gonna taste, plain and simple, but when your goal is to lose fat, something's gotta give. Let's give this a shot. So weird, so good. <laughs> I don't go crazy with honey because honey is high FODMAP and I find that too much of it irritates my digestion a little bit and the same goes for bananas but as long as the bananas aren't too ripe they are fine. The more ripe a banana is the higher it is in FODMAPs and FODMAPs are just specific types of fermentable carbohydrates so a few other examples would be things like avocado, garlic and onion, funny enough, are high FODMAP and don't digest well for a lot of people. Watermelon is another high FODMAP fruit. Dairy, tragically, is high FODMAP. So anyways, that's just something to stay aware of if you too are sensitive to high FODMAP foods. That's all she wrote. I absolutely inhaled that. If you're curious about how I hydrate after runs, I've got my bottle here. I take two of these Kirkland sparkling waters, and then I put one scoop of Realite. Strawberry is my favorite flavor. I have no affiliation with this company. It's just a good product. It is about two and a half hours later, and I'm feeling a little peckish. Got a bowl of grapes with some chopped up dates, a little bit of coconut milk, cinnamon, and salt. If your goal is fat loss, you might want to skip the coconut milk and also swap out the grapes and dates for things like berries. Because berries, like strawberries for example, you get so much food volume for the calories. So that's just a really easy substitution that you can make that still tastes amazing. And if you haven't tried salt on your fruit, I would highly recommend it. It is so good. Decided to have another bowl of grapes. I just finished up another work block and I'm gonna go to the park to do a little bit of mobility and some grounding. Dinner is on deck. We've got eight whole eggs there cooked in some tallow as well as some organic local sourdough. And I'm gonna add something else too. Oh baby, added some bacon as well as some smoked sea salt and I buttered up the sourdough. Now in the context of fat loss, you can make some super simple swaps here. So for example, the bacon, you could go for some leaner beef bacon or even turkey bacon. Also be mindful of how much cooking fat you're using. So for example, I use tallow, but you don't need a lot. 
You just need enough to coat the pan and so the eggs don't stick. Also, you might not need three giant pieces of sourdough. I ran 10 miles or 17K today, so I need a decent amount of calories to maintain my weight as well as performance. Another thing is to be aware of how much butter you are using. All of these little added fats can really accumulate over the course of the day. I over toasted the sourdough, oops. Done and dusted. I thought I might do some fruit after dinner, but I just, I really don't feel like I need it right now. I like to finish my last bite of food at the very least two hours before bed, but preferably three hours. I find that my sleep quality is way, way better when I lean towards that three hour mark. When in doubt, you can follow something called the three, two, one rule. And the three, two, one rule is three hours before bed, you finish eating. Two hours before bed, you cut off all liquids. And one hour before bed, you eliminate tech. A lot of my clients have noticed legitimate improvements in their sleep via following the three, two, one rule. Check this out. Right before sunset here in Hawaii is so beautiful. If you'd like to, feel free to thumbs up, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I will catch you in the comments. Be sure to let me know if you have any questions at all.